of different types show reactions to heat and blast. Field wire and telephones give evidence of scorching and burning. In touring the test site, it has become increasingly evident to the observers that subsurface emplacements offer considerable protection from nearly all but direct hits or low overhead bursts. The battalion combat team continues its march toward positions closer to ground zero. As they enter the blast area within an hour after the detonation, they realize the danger of radiation sickness from an air burst is slight. A zone pole several hundred yards from ground zero is inspected by a radiological safety man. Only slight evidence of radioactivity is found. The combat team proceeds with its tactical mission, continuing the simulated attack by passing through a portion of the bombed area. In these closer positions, the men inspect the sheep and the zigzag trenches. At one of the test positions, the men are briefed concerning damage to the various test positions which they have just seen. Later, the effects and evaluation group will prepare detailed reports on the results of the test for distribution to persons concerned with the tactical use and development of atomic weapons. Before entrucking for camp, BCT participants in the test are inspected with radiological detection instruments for evidence of radiation. A thorough head-to-foot examination will reveal any accumulation of radioactive material. Vigorous sweeping with a broom removes contaminated dust and dirt from shoes and clothing. As exercise Desert Rock is concluded, initial reactions are, it is possible to utilize an atomic weapon in close support of ground troops in those cases where the conditions surrounding its use are carefully considered and where participating troops are fully indoctrinated in the capabilities and effects of an atomic weapon. <laughs>